Shalom, this is Amon Yu, Tayak of Piscataway, Sophia Spiritual Light, the Amerukan Maryam, and we are here with today's cat report. Time now is uh, Tuesday, November 7th, 5.55 a.m. This is from November the 6th at 7.22 p.m., and if you would like to follow along, the link will be in the description bar, or you can go to aimfortruth.org. All right. So, there's a marvelous thing that happens for some fourth generation butterflies. The video below was uploaded two years ago in 2021 and points to a split in the timeline for November 8th and 9th, 2023. When the narrator gives timestamps, his date is 2021, so adjust the math by two years. You may not agree with the words or the images he uses, but I think the content is relevant for, for where many of us are in our thinking about humanity's future and individual ascension journey. And then there is a video link here. And I have to take a look at that and let y'all know what it says. Maybe tomorrow. All right. So are you like an emerging butterfly ready to ready to evolve into a higher state of being? And you can see here the life cycle of a butterfly. And this is interesting because I saw um, they have a butterfly um, garden at um, my kid's school. And when we had, um, they have something called student led. So when it had student led last week, um, there was a butterfly that's getting ready to hatch in the actual um, thing. And so it's at the black stage. And so my daughter had said, you know, you can see the wings from the top. And I was like, I can't see the wings. She said, well, sometimes if you look at it, you can see that it's because it's in the cocoon stage. You can see that it's getting ready to hatch. And I was like, oh, okay that's interesting i actually never um i never noticed that because i never seen a butterfly cocoon before um so that's really cool and um you know if you look closely enough you can see the wings uh start to emerge according to the children so that's interesting this is a perfect metaphor of human evolution through the seven stages of incarnation and ascension in this analogy, spiritual initiates are the butterflies that don't really come into existence until the fourth generation butterfly. The mineral stage, zero dimension, is likened to the egg. The plant stage, one dimension to the caterpillar. The animal stage, two dimensions to the chrysalis. And the butterfly stage, three dimensions to the human. The spiritual initiate is a conscious human who observes his three dimensions and, by doing so, begins to awaken his fourth dimension existence like a fourth generation butterfly who is capable of living longer i.e transcending time and flying great distances which is transcending space the butterfly example is an excellent metaphor of the seven stages of evolution that earth has gone through saturn um saturn sun and moon and currently in earth and will become jupiter venus and vulcan it is also a metaphor for the unfolding of the compute complete human spirit mineral plant animal or past ego human which is present spirit self life um spirit self life spirit and spirit man which is the future the fear you they, they fear you speaking up they fear you won't comply they fear you realizing you don't need them they fear you realizing you have your you have the power they fear you using that power they fear you waking up others they fear you living your life without fear um, this is about an ongoing operation that I won't say out loud um, <laughs> uh, so that they don't actually take down my channel already. But it's on the screen for you to read it for yourself um, of what, what the plan is. Okay. The video posted below in March will be even more meaningful today than it was several months ago. It, um, the Professional Victims Unit was reported to have one of the highest percentage of um jabbed in the world by the way the reason it doesn't make sense that andrew borla of pfizer and netanyahu would heavily vaccinate or jab their own um professional victims unit people is because borla and netanyahu hide themselves as professional victims unit but are not they're really babylonian radonite merchant bankers 
aka the synagogue of Satan in Revelations 2 and 9 and 3 and 9, who wants to destroy all of God's people, professional victims unit, and Christians. And this is a link to a video um, that is available on Bishu. Okay. Um, so essential to all written constitutions that a law repugnant to the constitution is void and that courts as well as other departments are bound by that instrument. This is from John Marshall, the fourth chief justice of the United States Supreme Court in Marbury versus Madison, 1802. And if you have not read the entire um, Marbury versus Madison decision, I highly recommend it. Uh, maybe that's something that I will read on this cha uh, this page because it means that in a short version, a house divided against itself cannot stand. So if somehow you are um, believing one thing but doing something different, that is that can't stand. And just to elaborate on this concept a little bit, this is one of the problems that, that we're having and why they think that they have permission to control us is because you say you want your own power back, right? But then you won't do the work to actually get it. And so, and then when you do some of the work, you don't understand that it was never up for them to give you your power back in the first place. So you've given your power to these people unknowingly or um, um, without your consent. And then you're going to them to get consent to get your power back. That doesn't make any sense. That's a house divided against itself. I don't look to the government to consent what I'm doing. I'm doing what I'm told to do by the most high in my spirit team, so on and so forth. Therefore, it is no, um, I don't have to ask the government for permission to do anything. I'm going to tell them what I'm doing. I'm going to be reasonable in my behavior because that's what required. And I'm not going to charge my brother usury because that's a clear law in the Bible. So um, waking up to that power is something that many of the channelers and um, astrologers and readers have been talking about. And that's that's what is required. It's required for you to wake up and say, I don't have to ask them for permission. First of all, they didn't even get my permission to I didn't get my consent for this system and then I'm going to ask them for permission out of the system which they didn't even get consent for me to participate absolutely not all right so um here we have a link for my linking to the um my video yesterday um this is we the people restore our constitution we did the research. I'm so glad she's going to talk about this. If you're looking for hard evidence of traitors in our government, use the search bar on the left side of this page and type in their name. For example, try James Comey or John Brennan. And then we have this whole treason report. This is something I have read. It is unbelievable. There's no such thing as hate speech in the Constitution. All speech is protected. If a lawmaker or judge tried to restrict your First Amendment rights by making or enforcing laws that are repugnant to the Constitution, he or she has identified themselves as an enemy and is a traitor to the country. And something you can do or you might want to think about. Matter of fact, let me just expand on this right here. One thing that um, we have been looking into or I have been looking into is remedies. How do you remedy these various situations? Now, there's a gentleman on YouTube goes by the name of Eon, E-E-O-N. Um, you probably can't even find his page if you search. He discusses remedies um, in no uncertain terms. His uh, thing is remedies. He has another channel called Redress Right as well. And he has um, listed a number of remedies to deal with these kind of things. And so one of the remedies I suggest that you look into is actually called arbitration. Now, they have an arbit a federal arbitration act. I won't go into all of that here, but um, because I, I have another channel where I talk about that kind of stuff. But here's the thing. You have arbitration and you also have tax credits. Arbitration is where you can take any company to an arbitrator 
and um, have an independent arbitrator evaluate your case. Now, why would you do that? One reason is that this gets the problem outside of the realm of the um, of the United States court system. The arbitration system is not the same as the court system. And if you read the, Arbit the Federal Arbitration Act, you will see that the arbitrators are quasi judicial meaning they their enforcement stand when an arbitrator gives you an award that award stands now how do you get even further out of this system um instead of or or how do you get further into the system instead of using uh uh, uh the american arbitration association which is what they recommend when you're going against a corporation you can look into actually using a private arbitrator. There are many, many, many private arbitrators. Um, we have a private arbitration association um, that, that we're in, a, or private arbitrators um, that um, I can refer you to. But we have private arbitrators. So you don't have to go to the American Arbitration Association. If you're coming up against a corporation and you're trying to get a settlement, then yes, you might want to use um, the American Arbitration Association. But if you have a, a problem with a person, an individual, you can go to private arbitration and those awards are actually binding. And what they try to trick people into doing is to go into the court to confirm the arbitration result, but that's unnecessary. The court does not have to confirm the arbitration result. All you have to do is go to arbitration and let the arbitrator decide your case. So if you have problems against... Um, um, this is the process that we have developed um, based on um, Eon on his channel, some things he's discussed in a personal group that we're in. Um, we change the terms and conditions. If you go to my main channel, Sophia Spiritual Light, um, you'll see that I have a terms and conditions on there. Um, we change the terms and conditions. We issued them in writing to the appropriate um, individuals, and that's why they're on all of my videos on my other channel. This channel I have to do um, a little bit different because um, I got to change the terms and conditions specifically to go with this channel. Anyway, um, we change the terms and conditions. We notify them as is required by law, three days. Um, and within three days, if no one challenges that, it, that means they actually agree to or concur with your change of terms and conditions. Then from there, um, if you have a private arbitrator, you give them a printout of when you issued the terms and conditions. Um, you uh, And if you're going to do that by email, it's even better because then you have a digital receipt, which counts. Um, you can also do this by mail. You change the terms and conditions to be the conditions that are favorable to you. You... Um, uh, issue them a bill for what they have done to you personally. Um, and then from there, you actually go to the arbitrator and let the arbitrator hear the case. Now, the arbitrator, being quasi-jurisdictional -jur or judicial, will have the opportunity to reach out to the person in which is, you know, you have the problem with. <clears throat> and then that individual will actually um, have the opportunity to respond back to um, your, uh, your affidavit because you, you, you submit an affidavit and an affidavit isn't truth unless it's been disputed. Um, you know, maybe I'll do some whole other videos on this um, because it's, a, it's a, a lot, but I'm just giving you the basic outline so you can start thinking about how to use the arbitration process along with the tax credit. So, okay. So once the, arbitration, the arbitrator makes their award, right? Let's say they award you a million dollars in your, in your favor. Well, you can now through the 1099C um, process, forgive that debt, cancel the debt. Because <clears throat> the Lord's Prayer says, as we, we forgive, we ask the Lord to forgive our debts as we forgive our debtors. I mean, that's in the um, Orthodox version. Um, hold on. I got it right here. Um, this one says, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, against us, or you forgive your, the debts as you, you know, as you forgive the debtors. The most high forgives us our debts and we forgive our debtors, right? And so you could then use a 1099 C process to forgive the debt. Then you have tax credits. 
Um, and you report that on your tax return. Um, I use the, I think it's the 8959 form for non-business bad debt. Um, if it's business bad debt in relation, um, the course of you doing business, then you will um, use a different form for that. But um, you, you have that debt forgiven on your tax return. Then you, um, bing, bang, boom, you're done. You have now tax credits. What can you do with those tax credits? Well, you can sell them. You can give them away. Um, you can never worry about the IRS ever coming after you ever. Um, that's what I've done with my tax credits. Um, you know, people with tax problems, you can gift them tax credits. They've done that as well. Um, there's lots of things you can do with tax credits. So um, tax credits are really the way the system works. Um, they tell you it's money. Um, this is why I'm not necessarily a proponent of gold and silver because um, that's not money either. The money, the, the money, the actual value is me and my energy. And I'll say that every day. The actual value is me and my energy. It's not money. It's not gold and silver. It's me and my energy. And the value of me and my energy is quantified in a gold and silver coin, but it is not the value. The value is me and my soul and my spirit. Um, anyway, that was a short lesson on tax credits, arbitration. I highly, highly, highly recommend you all look into this. It can solve a lot of problems. All right. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, some people they do. All right. Just making it clear again to the English cats in our cattery. We love our English cousins and know that you are as much victims of the British Pilgrim Society and the swamp called the City of London as we are in our own D.C. swamp filled with crown agents. A few centuries ago, many of us set sail from England, Scotland, and Ireland to free the tyranny of the British monarch. But over time, we began to realize the Constitution was not being followed, and Congress is or was filled with dual citizens and crown agents. Then we discovered, through our amazing research here on AIM, that we never won the American Revolutionary War. Seriously. The British monarchy tricked us and infiltrated themselves into our government, and then the Babylonian Rad and I merchant bankers took over the U.S. Treasury, and here we are today, with all of humanity fighting against the same evil that we tried to escape back in the 1700s, and even way before then. Time to unite all of humanity against the evil British Empire, where we go with one truth. We go as all humanity for freedom from tyranny. You may take our Wi-Fi, but you'll never take our keyboards. Keyboard warriors. All right, here we go again. Scots versus Brits and the Sangreal line to Jesus Mary. This is from the Post. Since Hallett is claiming his lineage to Jesus and Mary through the royal blood of King John, <laughs> okay, here's mine too through the lineage of the kings and queens of Scotland. I, Miss Tyler, is a direct descendant through multiple lines of Robert Bruce of Annandale, whose descendants included Robert Bruce lineage, King Robert I, Bruce, uh, Henry, David I, King of Scots, the Stuarts, Mary Queen of Scots. Our records of Sangre lineage are recorded and certified by these following genealogically societies, National Society of Colonial Dames, Daughters of the American Colonists, Daughters of the American Colonists, National Society of Colonial Daughters of the 17th Century, National, Son, National Society of Sons and Daughters of the Pilgrims, Daughters of the American Revolution. I would like to just, let me just say something. I find it really hurtful to me myself that as a quote-unquote black person uh, who really I am an uh, aboriginal to this country to the Americas um, I find it really really hurtful that I can't trace my lineage like that like like I have my lineage back pretty far to the 1700s but like I could never get certified by any of these people because they moved my people around so many different times so many different places it was so much stuff going on with the Native American Wars and then just like they did before they brought these race warriors up from um, quote unquote Mexico and South America. Oh, sorry, you guys. Timer. They brought these race warriors up from Mexico and South America to fight our original people who were already here. And 
and breed us out so that when you're looking at the quote unquote Native Americans now, you don't see people who look like me. You see people who look like the people from South America. And I'm not saying that all of them aren't original to the land. It's not what I'm saying. I'm talking about me, my situation in my line. I can't do that. I can't get certified by any of these things. All I can tell you is based on what I know, what I'm pulling up ancestrally for my actual bloodline, my actual DNA speaking to me. And I think that's really wrong. And so I wish that um, Americaren would release the records that they have of the aboriginals to this country, which they have the records. I know that they have the records and I know where they are. They need to release those records so people can actually figure out, especially native African Americans, but we're not from Africa, we're from America. Native, true Aboriginal Americans can look back and see where we came from. They have our records. We had records. They tried to destroy them in the churches because, um, I mean, people probably don't know this, but um, in the 70s or the 60s or the 50s, whenever, um, not the 70s, two problems. In the 70s, <laughs> let's start with the 70s. In the 70s, they had open slave manifests. So those manifests were not from the actual records. Those were people, um, traitors to the Aboriginal Americans, um, putting their names onto these manifests, saying that our people were on these boats when they probably weren't. That's one problem. The second problem was you had MLK in the 50s when he was going around to all these churches telling the churches to burn their records because a lot of our records were in our churches and the church records are gone because MLK told them to burn them. So, um, and I know that's true because in my church, my actual family church that I grew up in when my grandfather was a historian, They burned a lot of the records. So a lot of our church records we don't have. They destroyed them. They were actually destroyed by traitors. So I know all about traitors, uh, especially traitors to my quote unquote race or group. Anyway, back to Miss Tyler. All right. Additionally, three of our ancestors, Hugh by God, Richard DeClaire and Gilbert DeClaire were among the council of 25 barons that signed the Magna Carta. Our lineage records were officially accepted by the Matter Carna Dames on June 26, 2006. Our family of Scottish descendants has been fighting for a long war against the British for centuries. We fought them at the Battle of Stirling Bridge, then at the Battle of Lexington. Today, we fight the parish, the British Crown agents who have infiltrated our nations everywhere on the planet. We still claim as Scots our right to the throne is certainly more valid than the present Queen of England, now King of England. We need the Scottish line reinstated that claims association with the children of Jesus and Mary who ended up in Scotland, protected by the Stuart line. Many died to install the true lineage of Great Britain but failed in their attempts. So the true lineage of Jesus and Mary Stream, the Holy Blood lineage, is much more founded in the Scottish peerage than actually have uh, that, that actually have a historical relationship to the divine through the holy blood of Scottish descent. Additionally, one must look for the works of the person claiming to be the bridge of the divine through the ancient claim of divine right of king. The British monarch has bastardized that spiritual connection and sold out to um, Stephen downstairs himself. If one were, well actually sold out to the Leviathan, which the Leviathan Um, we have actually removed. So there is no more Leviathan. He sold out to nobody now. If one were to seek and find that divine lineage of of the British monarchy, the first place to look is Scotland. Then one would certainly need to look what spiritual lineage and history heritage accompany the claimant. By their works, you may know them is the ultimate test. Finding the Holy Grail is a part of the process of recognition of the true spiritual monarch of the British nation. The Grail appears to be in blood lineage, holy blood relics, and the spiritual work of the claimant. It takes a genealogical proof, the Holy Grail or relic, and the track record of the spiritual work to further the work of Jesus and Mary and their holy bloodline. You know, Tim Wallace interview on Yeshua, which I have not seen yet. Here we go. And this is uh, another meme. Uh, When the enemy comes to try to take you down, take up the sword of the spirit and stand your ground. Greater is he who is in with you. When you speak his name in the authority you have been given, the enemy will flee. Stand your ground. 